We've been tearing down VR headsets since 2016, and back in those days, they were an uncomfortable, awkward mess of cables and peripherals. Technology has come a long way since then, but surfaceability, swappable face pads, and wireless play have still fallen short of my expectations. Until the Vive XR Elite. Two 2K LCD panels, adjustable lenses, some pretty standard looking controllers, and a hot swappable battery. Pinch me, I must be dreaming. Before I get too excited, while I fix it does work with HTC to bring you parts for your Vive hardware, our editorial opinions are our own. They've got no say in teardown matters. First off, I'm after that battery pack slash headrest. Batteries are consumable, just like tires or headlight fluid. Eventually, you're gonna need to replace them. You could swap the whole assembly, but it'd be way cheaper to replace the cells themselves. So let's get prying. These clips are flexible and forgiving, and off pops a very copper intensive cover, protecting your brain and keeping things cool. I am loving the construction so far. Nine simple torque screws from our Marlin driver to our magnetic mat, and we're down another layer. Hello, board. Nice to see you, connectors. This metal shield is a good sign they're not using batteries as a structural component. There's a ton of heat management in here too. A few more screws and out pops the battery management board. One more screw and presto. Breathe a sigh of relief. These batteries have a bit of graphite tape, again for heat management, but otherwise they're free agents. These two identical 12.16 watt hour cells aren't anything fancy, which means they should be easy to replace and aren't likely to be damaged during removal. One more layer of metal helps with rigidity and heat management. I'm honestly satisfied with this battery tech, but fine, fine, I'll tear down the headset. Off pops the face guard, tool free too. The material selection on these lenses is excellent. The fabric will likely hold up great compared to foam or pleather. And behold, screws. Vive specifically mentioned they picked screws over glue to increase repairability. We love to hear it, but I don't love the thick plastic covers on the arm screws. At least they're all the same standard torques we've seen throughout. Here's an area where guides will come in handy. I should have taken these arm screws out first. The speakers pop right out, but the connectors are unfortunately a bit more buried than is convenient. Leaving those here for now. All right, let's get at these lenses. Pry up the faceplate and carefully disconnect the proximity sensor. Nice slack in the cables here. And then I'm just gonna fiddle for a bit. Lots of screws, some cables, clips. And while it's a bit finicky, especially the IPD slider, this disassembly is way nicer than a lot of other methods. Now we've got access to the display cables and the lens assembly is free. I'm just gonna remove every cable and screw I see and hopefully that gets us some layers. Ah, voila. We've got some octagonal LCD panels and the lenses pop right off. Oh, we can check out the diopters while we're here. This handy dial changes the focus, creating corrective lenses right in the headset. A bit more prying and we can see the focus adjustment is made with these sloped rails, lifting and lowering the diopter from the pancake lens and LCD. Let's scrape out the last of the interesting tech in this headset. More torque screws and we've got another battery cell in here. It's definitely not going to be a fun replacement. Luckily, this 1.47 watt hour battery will only be used during the battery pack hot swaps. So even with reduced capacity, it should hopefully do its job. Lots more heat management, including a hefty fan that keeps this board cool, along with heat sink, copper, and plenty of thermal paste, of course. And here's the beefy board. Silicone wise, we've got 128 gigs of onboard Samsung storage and 12 gigs of Samsung RAM over the XR2 processor. There's also a bonus USB-C port. This port is normally hidden by the face shield, but it's intended to allow for future accessories like eye tracking. At the XR's steep price point, I'm not sure that trimming features was the best idea, but I love the idea of a modular upgrade. Let's hope this future proofing pays off. Last but not least, cameras. Most of these cameras come out without a fight, but they probably won't be much fun to replace or recalibrate especially the central ones mounted to this magnesium frame. I, uh, I found the tough adhesive. That's five cameras and a bonus time of flight sensor that's as yet inactive. All in all, I'm really impressed with this hardware. Clearly a lot of thought went into this. It manages to stay small, simple, and relatively repairable. If VR hardware stays like this, I'll be a happy fixer.